Hey everyone, it's Kevin, and I wanted to share this new piece I created in Blender 3D with Grease Pencil. This is a 2D and 3D scene inspired by a postcard. In this video, I'll walk you guys through the creation of it and how to make this simple textured tune shader to achieve this illustrated look. I actually made this scene as part of the Grease Pencil course I just released with CG Boost. If you don't know what Grease Pencil is, it's an object within Blender that allows you to draw 2D in a 3D environment. Because of that, it's capable of integrating into many different workflows like this scene where we have both meshes and Grease Pencil elements. This piece was meant to be an exercise for those taking the course to practice drawing in 3D space. So the idea was that they would draw the missing cables from the suspension bridge with Grease Pencil. However, I liked the direction of this exercise and decided to build out a cityscape, culminating into this postcard look. I'll generally do this where I'll finish a piece, think on it, come back to it, and then we'll want to work on it more. So I'll always try to budget in breaks if I can while working. To create this scene, I model out the main elements first, like this bridge, landscape, city, and trees. Then I applied a textured tune shader to get that illustrated base. And lastly, I drew some grease pencil elements on top of the meshes and drew some around the environment to complete it. The big thing in this piece was the textured tune shader. Coming from a traditional design background, I initially wanted to learn 3D to improve my creative skill set. But once I learned about non-photorealistic rendering, I started focusing on creating pieces I would generally do in 2D but in 3D. So the idea of recreating cell shaded or textured looks was fascinating to me and redefined my entire workflow. It also made the creation process a lot more exciting and efficient. So this shader follows a basic EV tune shader setup, but allows for texture customization depending on what you're going for, and we'll create this in the next part. So here I have this monkey that I've subdivided and applied Shade Smooth on. And for the purposes of this tutorial, my viewport shading is set to render preview. We'll first start with a simple tune shader setup. With the object selected, I'll click new to create a new material. Then I'll hit shift A to bring in a shader to RGB node. This node is specific to the EV render engine and helps us achieve a non-photorealistic look. Then I'll bring in a color ramp and set it to constant. When I move these sliders around, you'll see we have a basic tune shader. Now, you can affect the coverage with the lights in our scene, so if I move this light object, you'll see the coverage adjust accordingly. To get rid of some of the blurry artifacts, I'll generally uncheck shadow in the light object. Now, to add the texture, we'll need to bring in two nodes, a gradient texture and noise texture node. Let's also bring in a mix RGB node. Connect the nodes accordingly with the gradient texture color output into color 1 and noise texture color output into color 2. Then plug the mix color output into the principal BSDF base color input. I'll increase the factor value of the mix RGB node to 1 and then adjust the scale of the noise texture node. Then you'll see the color transition has this texture applied. There's a variety of options you can experiment with, so feel free to do so. Now, to have more control over this, you can select one of the texture nodes and add a mapping and texture node. If you have Node Wrangler installed, you can hit Ctrl T or add them manually and connect them accordingly. I'll also plug the vector output of the mapping node into the noise texture node. Then you can adjust these mapping values to your liking. If you find that you can't really control the color coverage with just the color ramp or lights, you can bring in a math node, place it before the color ramp, set it to multiply, and adjust it as needed. This is the basic idea for the shader on these meshes. You can also change out the noise texture for a magic or wave texture, if you'd like, for further customization. With that shader created, I applied it onto all of the meshes, adjusting the colors and the values in the mapping node as needed. I also brought in some lights to help adjust the coverage. After, I moved on to adding Grease Pencil elements. I used Grease Pencil to add details on top of the meshes and drew some standalone elements like these structures in the back and the trees. If you've ever seen my cake tutorial, you'll know this is the workflow I prefer, which is with a combination of meshes. Then I added some postcard specific elements like this text, postmark, and border with an object constraint to follow the camera. Lastly, to get that bright glow aesthetic, I toggled Bloom in the render settings and added glare nodes in the compositing tab. 
If you'd like to download this project file, you can get access to it through my Grease Pencil course release with CG Boost. This is available on the CG Boost website, and I'll have a link to it in the description below. Right now, it's an early access, so it's 20% off. We're planning on adding more to the course soon, covering more exciting grease pencil techniques and workflows, and this will all be included upon release. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks again, happy holidays, and see you guys next time.